Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as I stated in the last video, it is uh, getting going on the MR2 again, trying to get this thing done. I've got about five days to have it ready for a Cars and Coffee event that I would like to take it to. So uh, it's really uh, getting back to work on the interior, getting uh, the seats recovered, clean everything out and get it all reinstalled. And let's do some final cleanup on the vehicle. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the work on the interior. All right, so first thing, um, and I actually already did this off camera. I kind of had a few minutes between doing other things, so I just jumped on and did it. It's hard to see, but um, I did put the clamshell back together. And one thing I installed this time is Wilhelm Racing has a filler plate that goes in between the two clamshell pieces, really easy to install. And it's just to fill in these holes here uh, when you have an aftermarket steering wheel. The boss does, you know, from the factory, this is cut out. Uh, so you have this big gaping hole that looks terrible. And this kind of fills it in a little bit. Uh, it's better than nothing. So here and then up here on the side, uh, just where the, the cutout is from the factory. So install that and got the clamshell reinstalled there. Also put the uh, steel panel, the protector panel underneath the dash. That's reinstalled. So I uh, did those. Like I said, just had a few minutes to mess around with some stuff. So I was went ahead and did those things. I did have to pull the steering wheel off to put that little plate in, so it ended up being a little more involved than I expected, but it's done. Um, the clamshell around the steering column is fully reinstalled. That's the MR2 Heaven, a uh, little bit heavier duty one with the, uh, the aftermarket gauge pot I have. So everything's in its final spot there. Um, so yeah, next on the list, I wanna get the seat out because I have to recover these seats. As you can see, this one's pretty rough shape as far as the bolster goes. Um, I have the MR2 Heaven uh, leather covers for the two seats, so this one's gonna come out, and then it's gonna be getting to work on cleaning the interior and uh, getting everything ready to start putting parts back in. All right, seat is out. As you can see, it is a mess in here. You can kind of see how much darker carpet is where the mat was, because the mat is an absolute mess laying there on the ground. So. Uh, I'm going to go to town on this. I'm hopefully, or I'm hoping a vacuum will be enough to get this out and I'm not going to have to shampoo the carpets, but we will see. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead, grab a vacuum, get, get going to town on this side, see how it turns out. Uh, the mats, I'll probably just take them outside and hose them off and let them dry in the sun. Uh, that might be the best bet to get those real clean, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll definitely start on those with a vacuum as well. So see uh, what happens. All right, well, went over it with the shop vac just to see, and yeah, it's still pretty gray looking. So I have a feeling I'm going to need to do something a little bit more than just vacuum, which I kind of figured that Bondo dust and body filler dust is pretty heavy duty stuff. So uh, on to plan B, I think I'm gonna be getting a carpet cleaner out and going to town on this with carpet cleaner. All right, update time. So once again, I think we have tub of towels, mechanics wipes for the wind. Uh, started kind of going over the back, just cleaning some stuff off. And I was like, hey, I wonder if these will work on the fabric at all. And yeah, I mean, I was turning the wipes pretty dark in color, just trying to clean stuff off. And basically from here to this side is where I've wiped over with the tub of towels and then just went over with a vacuum again real quick. In front of it there, you can see how much lighter it is. That is where I have not gotten to yet in the actual footwell. So it does seem to be making a difference. So I'm just gonna keep on cleaning this way and uh, hopefully get this all taken care of. I went over the seat belts once. I'm gonna have to go over them again just because they're pretty thick as far as uh, the dust where they were exposed. So, uh, but yeah, just gonna keep on cleaning. All right, well, a little bit later and lots of mechanic wipes and some vacuuming and here we go. Pretty uniform looking. Got, you know, the dirt out, pretty heavy with how it looks. I mean, it looks a little bit light just because of the glare from the overhead LED light that I have shining down so I can see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with how it turned out. Got all of the white blotches out and all the different stains and whatnot that I saw from uh, all the work at the body shop. So this side is done. Still need to do the passenger side. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get moving over there and get all the stuff out of the floorboard on that side and uh, start cleaning. One other thing I did real quick before I head over the other side is anything that uh, is plastic that normally gets detail covering or whatnot, I went over it and just tried to 
put a pretty thick coat of uh, the this detail around it just so it can start soaking it up just because this stuff has been dried out for so long sitting in a body shop so just kind of went over the plastics that I've just recently reinstalled or was messing with just to try and uh, get it soaking in some good cleaner like the speaker cover down there is you know all nice and shiny whereas it was all dingy and full of dust like the one over there so uh, yeah just working on things and uh, heading over to the passenger side now all right, so you know how they say one thing leads to another? Well, that's kind of what happened here. Um, as I was going over to the other side and uh, starting to clean things out, I remembered, oh, I've got some you know, more trim I need to install on this side. And as I was digging through the pile, it then you know, reminded me that, oh, I still need to put the accelerator pedal in. And then that also means I needed to put the grommet in. So as you can see up there, I installed a grommet in the hole from the old throttle cable um, using the same kit that I had. It was a... It was this one, it was the 22.23. Um, it's a little loose, but the one that's bigger won't fit. So that's the best thing I'm gonna do. So then I went ahead and I snaked the uh, cabling for the throttle cable or throttle pedal up under into the dash. It's coming through there. And then I have it up and over the duct work and hanging down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the pedal bolted in and then I will zip tie wires out of the way. So that will be installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done right now. All right, and here we go. Accelerator pedal is installed. You can see I used Frankenstein bracket. It's all up in place. Uh, and I just vacuumed up the little bit of additional mess I made. So we are good on this side for the most part. Um, I didn't install the center trim because I also remember my radio stopped working shortly after I started disassembling things. I don't know if a wire got loosened or there's a blown fuse somewhere, but figure I'll leave that trim panel off for now until I get that sorted out. Uh, you can see the excess wiring for the throttle cable. I just kind of zip tied it to the uh, chassis bundle that's in there to just kind of keep it from flailing all over the place. So that is all set. Uh, I will warn you, it is very awkward trying to get that pedal in. Um, those bolts, they angle kind of towards the center console, if that makes sense. So trying to get the right angle to get them threaded in while trying to reach under there is uh, not the most fun thing to have to do. But uh, yeah, I already had the pedal mounted to the Frankenstein bracket, so I was trying to just put it on in all as one assembly. So just warning you, uh, for me, it was a little bit frustrating. I also have bad, sh you know, one really bad shoulder, so I'm kind of down to one arm, so that made it even uh, more difficult. So, uh, but that is done, so it will be on to the next side now. All right, and over on the passenger side, here is what I am working with. This is after going over it with a vacuum real quick, trying to just get all the loose stuff up. But you can see, you know, the drip marks and stuff from the time in the body shop being exposed. So I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other side, go over it with the mechanic wipes on the carpet, see what I can get out of the carpet, vacuum it again, and hopefully all this stuff will be gone and it will look nice. All right, and here's the result after uh, scrubbing it with some of the wipes and getting all of the little stain marks out. So it turned out pretty good. Happy with those results. Um, I did take the um, floor mats outside and scrubbed them, sprayed them with a hose so they are drying in the sun out on my front porch, as you can probably see right there. Uh, so I'm going to see how those turn out. And the next thing is I need to grab some of the interior cleaner stuff and go over some of the plastics here and get those nice and oiled up or dressed up with that dressing just so the plastic can absorb some of that since it is so dried out from sitting in Bondo dust for a year and a half. All right, so next on the list is installing the headliner. Uh, here is how it currently sits. Um, you can see there's some spots where it's a little dark, it was a little stained. It was worse, I was just going over it. This is the <laughs> mechanics towel that I was using. This is all from the headliner, just trying to take stains off of it. So just been slowly kind of going at it, trying to get the stains removed as best as possible, just to you know, make it blend a little bit better. It actually looks worse on this video right there than it does in person. Uh, it's got, you know, that spot there from where water was seeping through one of the holes for the T-top seal, um, you know, the, the screw that mounts it to the roof. There was a little bit of water seepage in that when I got the car, and that's kind of what stained that. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go over it a little bit more, and then I'm going to go ahead and get the headliner back in the car. All right, well, here we go. Headliner and the mirror and the overhead light are installed. 
Uh, one thing I am just noticing that I probably should have noticed before is it appears that something has shorted out or a fuse popped or whatnot because if you see doors open, keys in the ignition, but there's no buzzer and my lights are not on. I kind of noticed that there was no buzzer a little while ago and just really kind of didn't think too much into it. But yeah, it seems I have now developed a wiring issue somewhere because... I did have a buzzer. I had a buzzer after the swap was done. So I don't know if something, when I was messing with the gauge cluster, that's really all I can think of to redo the tack. Something didn't get connected uh, at that point in time or got loosened or whatnot. So I think that circuit goes through the dash because I don't have a door jar light on either. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of research on wiring for the car and uh, I have a feeling there's an issue with my cluster causing my door buzzer and door lights to not work. All right, so looked at the wiring diagram and I have a feeling I just didn't plug something in right in the back because with it in the on position, I also don't have a fastened seatbelt light anywhere. So no door jar, no fastened seatbelt. I'm guessing there's just a connector that goes into the back of the combination meter that did not get plugged in. So. I'm going to be trying to sneak my hand back there and check all the connections and get this figured out. All right, so false alarm. Um, you know, you have those moments where you take everything apart, check your wires, and then go, wait a second, could it be something so simple and stupid as a fuse? And that is exactly what it was. Uh, the uh, fuse under the frunk area had popped, and now we have a working dome light. The light is on the dash saying the door is ajar, so we are pretty good there. And then also when the key is put into the ignition, the buzzer is back and we have everything working. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all buttoned back up and on to the next. All right, so next issue I am chasing is dead radio. Um, I did check the fuse first on this one and the fuse does work, so we're good there. Uh, so this aftermarket radio, if I remember right, it stopped working basically the day I took it to the body shop. It had been working up to that point uh, and then all of a sudden crapped out on me. So I am going to check some wiring, see if I can find any issues there, uh, test for power and uh, see where we are at. All right, well, here we are. Um, took a little brainstorming and chasing wiring and I figured out the problem. Thankfully, it was something very simple, as you can see. Stereo is on. Uh, what happened is when things were being taken apart for the paintwork and disassembled, this car originally had the amplifier subwoofer set up. Those two plugs back there, the white and the orange that go into the factory amp, were unplugged and never got plugged back in. So without those being plugged into the factory amp, even if you have an aftermarket radio, all the wiring goes through the factory amp and it will not work um, unless you rewire everything and bypass it and do the splicing that would need to be done. So um, thankfully my amp still works. I plugged both of those plugs back in and we have a working stereo again. So winner there. Um, so yeah, that is one more thing off of the list. Uh, I also have my gauge reading zero again, which that boost gauge was sitting dead because it's tied in the power wires are spliced into the uh, radio so now it works so uh one last thing to fix all right radio is back in place um and yeah if, with that issue being resolved i think this is a good spot to stop um we'll, we'll finish on a couple of nice wins um, next video, it was going to be recovering the seats, new leather covers from MR2 Heaven. Uh, I need to get the tint off of the two door windows and then pretty much just buttoning the interior back up. I think part of that will also be adjusting the door glass, uh, cause both sides are leaking pretty good. So I need to put some conditioner on the seals and then adjust the glass accordingly. So, uh, that being said, if you are enjoying what you're seeing, if you got some stuff you're taking away from it please hit like, please hit subscribe, please hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and have a great day.